Hey everyone, Rob here, and I know it's been a little while since I posted a video, I think it's almost been a year, uh, but it's been the same old, same old here in Iceland with the possibility of an eruption going up, an eruption happening for like a couple of days, and then repeat. You know, it's just been over and over and over. Uh, we are leading up to what seems to be yet another eruption. I just wanted to talk about that today. This is news coming out of the meteorological office in Iceland. Uh, you can see all the news at veather.is. A lot of it is in Iceland, though, which is why I like giving these updates. Now, this is all updated from September 25th, and they say that there is an increased likelihood of magma and an eruption from the 27th, which was yesterday, which was Saturday. So today is the 28th. Now, they have a new alert level, which they've raised, the new hazard assessment card, which is a bit different than we've seen previously. And we just want to dive into all of that. Now, they say that when they've been examining the events that occurred at the Sundsnuk Crater Series since December 2023, again, almost two years of this, it becomes clear that the amount of magma that needs to accumulate in the chamber under Svartsengi before an eruption, uh, it can vary. Now, uh, and the analysis of uh, all of the past events they've had have enabled the meteorological office here in Iceland to estimate the amount of volume that it needs to accumulate, um, you know, before a, an eruption or, or a magma flow or a trigger of this type of thing. Now, uh, what we're seeing here is a graph showing the development of magma accumulation at a depth of four kilometers under Svatsengi from July to December 18, 2025. So quite a small window because uh, we had the eruption right before that. Now, um, the black dots show the calculated magma volume after the last eruption and the red dots show the accumulation during an ongoing eruption. So you can see the eruption was uh, right here towards the, uh, yeah, I'd say late summer is when we had a little bit of it. During the eruption, interestingly enough, of course, accumulation was still building up. So we did see that we saw a little bit of a dip, but not really. So yeah, once the lower limit has been reached, when we're looking at all of this analysis, that uh, the area is considered to have entered a period of increased probability of a magma flow or eruption at this crater range. And the period spans approximately three months and an eruption can begin any time during this period. Now the assessment will be revised, of course, if there is a change in the flow, in the inflow, or you know any of the other real-time measurements that they have going on that show clear signs. Now, one thing I do wanna show is looking at this graph versus previous ones. Of course, we're here at the end towards these, this red one. These are all of the other ones, and you can see where eruptions uh, were or have been in the previous uh, couple of years. And this is going all the way back to when we had this really drastic earthquake series in Grindavik. You can see here at the top left very corner, that's when uh, yeah there was a lot of damage and destruction to Grindavik and sort of triggered all of this that's been going on. The Blue Lagoon, etc. All of it, you know, heightened steady of alert since that period. But you can see there is a bit of a pattern where we get that accumulation going up and then the eruption and then it sort of repeats the pattern uh, depending on how long it goes and how much accumulation. Now, one thing that I am noticing, though, if we look at the graph, the amount accumulated has sort of reached a peak around this, uh, you know, 24, 25 area here. And it seems like perhaps, and again, there's no saying what could happen, perhaps we're seeing a downward trend as we move into the future. Um, if it's sort of this, you know, bell curve or whatever you want to call it uh, type of thing, we could see a couple of more eruptions before the series kind of fizzles out, but we are seeing quite a lot still. Now, moving on to the assessment and the alert level. Now, this is a little bit different than we've seen before. They used to have large blocks of area, um, and now it's just sort of these color graph, pixely sort of things. I'm going to zoom back out so we can uh, go through all of this. This is the new card that has been issued, and it's valid from September 25th to October 14th, unless there's any change that requires, you know, changing the card like an eruption. You can see based on the color, and this is all in Icelandic, but I'll describe it. The gray is very little, and then green is little, and then there's sort of a medium, higher tolerance, a lot of hazard, and then very much. So it's usually this purple color when there's an eruption, and we have these different areas which talk about uh, what's it. But we we know that Svatsangi is here, the Blue Lagoon is just sort of right here, this blue area here right beside it. 
So um, interestingly, you know, Blue, Blue Lagoon is pretty protected, and these black lines are the fortified areas, basically, around uh, the area. They have done it, but we also look at, you know, area A, B, C, D, E, etc., which is what they're saying. But the uh, the fortified areas where they've raised the land have, is essentially where this, this black line is. Now, for all of the reasons that we've mentioned previously on you know, looking at the land rise and, you know, where we're at here and the, and the trajectory that that's happening. That is why the meteorological office has decided to raise the alert for the Reykjanes Svartseng area uh, from level one to level two. And that's the VALS or VALS, and they call it that, and is the volcanic alert level system. So as a result of everything, they've raised the area uh, and it has been assessed to that. Now, again, what is this VALS? And it's a, uh, it's in Icelandic again, but it's basically a system that they go from zero to three. You know, zero being like yeah, nothing to concern, maybe a little bit of issue when we go to level one. Level two is a higher alert, and then level three is, of course, a volcano or an eruption is ongoing. Uh, and yeah, you have to have immediate precaution on that. So there is a lot of information based on what that alert system means and how to read it but essentially it's it's just that it's just you know the the level three is an eruption going on and the level zero is nothing level one is a small concern and then it uh it just sort of fizzles out from there so uh yeah i mean it's it's a lot going on if we look at the maps that have taken place from the last assessment to now we can see here this is the one from the 23rd of september and then we come of course over to the 25th and there is just you know quite a uh, a difference we're seeing in terms of the assessment and the i would say danger area basically you don't want to be in this area down over here towards the red um blue lagoon is still safe and you can still take this road but again venturing off not only do you risk a volcanic corruption at any moment with as little so i think the last one was maybe a 10 minute notice or something like that um so you don't know how long you have but also there's a lot of really deep crevices that you could fall into here it is very difficult to walk around this area and uh, I mean it's still warm lava underneath so you could break through and it's very dangerous on top of all that there are potentially hidden mines from uh, a bunch of military exercises that have occurred in this area that people may not be uh, not have found basically so you could step on some explosives on top of everything so uh, that's pretty much it for the news. I mean, we're going to be watching this more closely as the time goes on. And of course, if there's an eruption, I will let you all know. So uh, stay tuned. Be sure to keep subscribed. We'll be posting some other content non-volcano related as well so that you get to know Iceland a bit better. So until next time, thanks so much for watching.